now let's do the other thing now. The other thing is we want to fill out this button, right? The get profile button. We want to do something with get profile, right? It doesn't do anything. So what is the get profile button? We have to look for the name. The name is actually called read button. That's just a old name I had. So the button is actually read button. It's labeled get profile, but the ID is called read button. So I'm just going to go up. Uh, let's, uh, this is the all users button handler. So let's, let's move the all this down and let's make a new one for read button click. So there's a bunch of parentheses going on, but again, I just want to test with the hello world, right? Console the log read button clicked just to make sure it works. Reload the page. Now when I click this, it should say read button click. Perfect, right? Read button clicked. I click however many times, it'll go that many times. That means this code is running. Great way to diagnose it. Uh, now what do we want to do? Uh, we want to, first of all, get what I put in here as my name, right? Because the whole point is if I put Philip here and I hit get profile, I want to get Philip's profile. Or if I put John in here, I want to put John's profile and so forth. So we need a way to get the value of this text box out. And it turns out that a good way to get the value is, again, using jQuery. So what is this text box? We're going to go down. This text box is called name box. The ID is called name box. Again, these names I just made up. You can make it whatever you want. You just have to match it. So name box is the ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a jQuery select again. I'm selecting the name box element. The val function with parentheses is a way to get the current in jQuery. It's a way to get the current value of a text box. So calling this should get me the string Philip, or if I have this, the string John and so forth. This is all standard front end stuff for jQuery. So what I want to do is I want to make, whoops, whoa. I want to make a request URL equal to user slash plus name box val. So like, whoa, okay, what just happened? So this is just a variable or a constant, I guess. And I want to make it user slash the name box value. So the idea is that I want to make this into user slash Philip when it's Philip or user slash John or uh, Carol or so forth, right? So I want to take whatever's in here and construct a string out of it. Just to show that it works, I'm going to do a console log again. And we'll say making Ajax request to colon re oops, request URL. Ah, I can't spell. Okay, so this just console logs. It makes a URL string, request URL, and then it just prints it out to the screen. It doesn't do anything else. Again, we want to test it to see if it works. Uh, notice how we haven't had to reboot the server at all, right? I haven't had to reboot the server, and that's because I haven't modified the server code at all. All of this code is in the browser, in the client side JavaScript. And the way to refresh this is to refresh the web page, right? When I refresh the web page, it will load my new HTML file with the client side JavaScript code. Okay, so let's hit get profile. What should happen? Uh, let's just put Philip in here. When I hit get profile, it says making Ajax request to user slash Philip. Exactly what I want. Uh, it wraps over lines because my font's too big. So don't worry about the wrapping. When I say John, get profile, making Ajax request to users John. If I say Bobby, a lot of Bs making Ajax request to user slash Bobby. So this is exactly the URL I want to construct. And then the next step logically is to make the Ajax call. So Ajax, remember how we're just going to follow one step at a time. Uh, this is the open and close parentheses for the function call. This is the open and close brackets for the parameter object. It takes in one big object as a parameter. Now what's the URL we want? We want request URL. So notice how the URL we want is going to depend on the value of the name box, uh, which is here, which is Bobby or ASDF or, or whatever, right? Uh, everything else is still similar. Type is get, data type is JSON. And I think that's it, and then success, okay. And now success is a function that we run when this Ajax call finishes successfully. So I wanna make sure it's the same thing at the bottom, okay. Okay, so these are all boilerplate. Remember, a very important thing is that this request URL I'm just highlighting is the URL we're going to make the call to. And when we succeed, let's just uh, print out the data. So we're just going to say console.log, you received some data, exclamation mark, data. 
So very similarly, we're just gonna uh, we're just going to call it. And if our AJAX call is successful, this line runs, you receive some data. So reload. Text box is empty. So let's say fill first try. You're gonna get profile. Now check this out. It says making AJAX request. If make this a little smaller, actually. Okay, so first it says making AJAX request to users Philip, which is this line right here. And then a you know a micro or millisecond later, it's done. And it says you receive some data. And uh, you receive the data for Philip, which is job professor pet cat, which is exactly my object. So recall in the back end, this is the object that I wanted. So you've managed to pass it from the uh, front end to query the back end. The back end grabs this and sends it back to the front end, and the front end now prints it. Again, we made a round trip. So uh, recall if I do this for John, it should give me John's info, which is you request uh, you receive some data, John student dog and then carol is the third one right uh, engineer bear okay what if happens if someone's not in the database what is the return remember it returns which is going back to the server it returns the empty object right if it's undefined so let's see if it happens yep you receive some data and this is the bracket bracket empty object so whatever junk you put in here it'll receive the empty object back Right, I'll receive the empty object back. Okay, so um, let's do something with the data. So, you know, if the data is not empty, we know that it has a job field key and a pet key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna handle two cases. We're gonna say if data.job and data.pet, that's the best case scenario, whether we have a job and we have a pet, right? The and and is an and. Uh, we're going to do something, and then else we're going to do something else. So that's the error case. We have a job and we have a pet. Let's first of all set our status to uh, successfully fetched oops, data at URL. Just wrapping over a line. Uh, it's a little bit long, but uh, actually let's make this move this over a little bit. Um, we're going to set the status, and then if we don't have it, we're going to set the status to error could not find user at URL, something like that, just to just to show we've uh, we've handled both cases. So again, if the data has a job and a pet field, we're going to display success in the status. If not, we're going to display an error. And uh, where is the status again? It's just a div at the bottom of the page. This is status right here. Nothing fancy. Okay, so we're gonna test if this code works. So we have two cases, success and error. Reload. Uh, when I say Philip, this should succeed. It says, oh, successfully fetched data at URL user Philip. Great. John, successful. Uh, Bobby, Bibby. Error could not find user URL Bibby because we received empty data, right? So any you know, body who's not in our URL, uh, who's not in our database, we can't find. So it goes to this error route. So this is happens to do some error handling. Okay, let's be optimistic and just fill in the rest of the um, of the, the successful cases. So notice how there's a job div div and an image pet image, uh, an image tag, that's pet image, that's empty right now. We're gonna fill in both of those from the database if we're successful. So uh, we're gonna go back here. If we're successful, we're gonna do job div HTML. We're gonna set the HTML to my job is plus data dot job. Um, so again, what does this do? This will set find job div and set the job div to my job is string plus the data dot job object. So recall that if I'm John, the job is student, right? And if I'm Philip, the job is professor and so forth. Um, if we're not successful, let's set the job div to empty. So empty string, just to clear it, just so we don't have a um, we don't have stale results. Okay, we're gonna save, we're gonna reload. Let's try it. John, get profile. Perfect. My job is student. Successfully fetch data. This just kind of goes below the fold. And then we receive some data. Uh, Philip should work as well. 
buster and then uh, if we do bibby and notice how my job is cleared right we want to clear it because otherwise it'll still say my job is professor and we want to clearly clear it because there's an error okay so the final thing is putting the pet so recall that the pet image is an img image tag so what we can do to image tags is actually set the source of the image so let's call it pet image so we're going to set the attribute src to data.pet like well what does that mean this means that an image tag every image tag has an attribute called source src and when we set it to a valid url it will actually display the image inside and so if we save this and we grab data.pet out let's see what happens so we're going to reload philip get profile beautiful so say my job is professor and here is my cat picture. So if we look at the Chrome Explorer here, oh, it's gonna be hard to see because it's zoomed in so much. If we look at the Chrome Explorer, <laughs> something we can zoom, oops, let's zoom out a little bit. I close this, okay. Assume that I've selected my cat here. It says now image, ID is pet image, source is cat.jpg. This is exactly the cat JPG that we're getting from uh, from localhost, right? This is exactly this cat JPG is like we went here and we just said cat.jpg. That's exactly where I found it. And same with dog and so forth. So let me go back to the console and make this a little bit more magnified. So this is why we have the image source cat here. So this line is responsible for setting the pet image's source, SRC, to data.pet. If we do this with John, it should set it to the dog. If we set this to Carol, it should set this to the bear. And if we, uh, well, we should clear it. <laughs> so if we uh, have an error, let's say pet image uh, atcher source is empty string so we're just going to set the source to empty so we uh, clear it out so let's reload again so let's say carol is a bear her pet is bear bear picture is kind of big we'll adjust this in a moment uh now we look for bobby when we say get profile notice how uh the bear is the image is gone and the tag is gone because we set it to completely empty we, we set the the source to completely empty um I think you might find that's a little bit annoying here. It's just cosmetic thing is that the cat picture is kind of big, right? And the dog picture is big also. So there's a way to set the size of the images. So the way to set the size is to chain another ATTR. If we do ATTR um, with 300 px, this is just CSS, it's just purely CSS. If we now set the width to 300 pixels, we'll know that uh, this pet image is gonna be 300 pixels. and Conversely, when there's an error, we're going to set the width to uh, zero pixels just to make sure it's hidden. Okay, so we have two cases here. We have uh, we have a pet and a job, and we don't. So the last thing I want to test to make sure the width is uh, 300. So I'm going to reload. Philip, get profile, and beautiful. The cat is now much smaller. It's 300 pixels wide, and if I put John. The dog is 300 wide, it looks much nicer. Carol, bear is 300 wide. And if we put Bobby, uh, it's zero wide. And then there's an error message it couldn't find. It couldn't find Bobby. 